When it's time for you to put together your database structure for your Bubble app, it's important you have a really organized naming system for the data types, so what you call each of the data types, your field labels, and your option sets. At the end of the day, these labels are internal, so your users aren't going to see them. It's really just for you. So whatever makes the most sense for you is what matters. But there are certainly approaches you can take to certainly help yourself uh, move through your development. I have a list of data types. I have quite a few of them here. And the first thing I want to point out is that the labels that I have for the data type names are incredibly concise. Most of these are just one word. Um, this is because anytime I reference a data type, I'm going to see that name um, and most likely a field name after that as well. So if I can keep the labels of these things as concise as possible, it's just easier to you know move through. It's, it's cleaner um, and quicker to kind of absorb what it is that I'm referencing. You certainly don't want to have sentences in here or anything. The other thing that I want to point out is that I've labeled all of these data types in the singular form. You want to think of the structure of the data type itself as representing one record or one entry in that table at a time. So your data type labels best uh, defined in the singular form. Okay, That way, when you see expressions like do a search for episodes, do a search for courts or drivers, Bubble knows to pluralize those labels. You might also notice that I have some emojis uh, in the front of some of these names. Now, this is really great, not just to help call attention to specific uh, data types here and kind of have another visualization that can help describe the data type in a single uh, in a single emoji, uh, but it can also help organize uh, the data types in this particular view of your editor. By default, Bubble sorts everything alphabetically. Um, and if you have an emoji in the front, well, now you've got them grouped by that emoji. And so if you have lots of data types like I do here, uh, and you know there's a handful of data types that all kind of are, are describing or are support a specific feature, grouping them together in this way can also make it easy for you to move through your editor um, you know, in the back end here. Now, very similarly for fields, um, you want to be concise with the labels. So if we're looking at my phone data type here, a phone is going to have a relationship to a contact. Um, so I've, I've labeled it quite literally, right? Th this field is, is pointing to a contact record. And so the label is just contact. Um, it's going to have the phone number itself and maybe a status for a phone if this is something that um, I'm checking to see if it's a valid number or not. Um, so I'll talk about option sets here in a second. Now, notice that I'm also not placing the name of the data type in front of the field name again. I'm not duplicating that. So it's not phone contact, phone number, phone status. It's just contact number status. Because anywhere you create an expression that's going to reference the field name, you will always see the data type name in front of it. Bubble's going to do that for you. So it will ultimately, in your expressions, say, phone, contact, phone, number, but you don't have to duplicate that word in the field name. So again, very, very concise. You also want to uh, pay attention to whether the value of the field is going to be a single value or a list value. Um, let's go to an example here. Let's say under the user. Um, okay, so the user has uh, a list of favorite colors. Uh, this is an option set here that is intentionally labeled uh, not that well. We're going to make a correction there. Uh, but this is a list field, so there's going to be multiple values that can be saved here. So the way that I've labeled the field is in the plural form because that helps me understand that the structure, the format of the field is a list. And that makes a huge difference when you are working in your, um, you know, in your expressions, in your conditions, um, when you're creating your logic. The easier you can make yourself understand what the format of these values are just by reading the name of it, the better. All right. So the last thing that I want to go over here is your option sets. So option sets, you want to approach them very similarly to data types and fields. Be concise. Be literal with it. What we have here is a list of option sets that have been intentionally labeled in a very messy way. So I typically like to put the word OS in front of um, the option set so that I can keep them apart from my data type. So for example, OS status. Right, and that's in the singular form. Look how much that cleans up automatically. Um, here we have phone statuses. So I would say OS phone status. This other status was probably describing something else. Completed, preparing, delivering, archive. Let's say delivery status, something like that. 
right? And so be very clear about keeping your option sets and your data types and fields apart from each other. You certainly don't want to have two things labeled the exact same way. Otherwise, how are you going to tell them apart, right? So for the uh, colors, right, I would probably just say OS colors like this. Okay, so much more concise. It's easier to find something when you're scanning it, especially if you have a big list of option sets here. So the big takeaways here are concise labels, keep them as literal as possible, pay attention to whether something should be labeled in the singular or plural form, um, know that you can place emojis at the front of the labels to help you group them, especially when you're looking at it from this view here uh, in your editor. Uh, and you know, label it in a way that's going to really help you understand exactly what it is the, the table is for or what the field is describing, what kind of value is saved to that field in the database. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, definitely check out the content you see on the screen now. These videos will help you better build and launch your app and a lot more quickly too.